Hey, Brandon with Pins PC. Today, I am here to show you how to install games to the Wii U side of the console. My previous guide showed how to get USB Loader GX installed on the VWii, or also known as Virtual Wii side, to play Wii, GameCube, and WiiWare games on a Wii or Wii U console. Now, this tutorial will show different options available to download and install Wii U and Wii U Virtual Console games. Not only that, but be able to inject Wii, Wii Homebrew, and GameCube games using a tool called Tikan Moon's Wii VC Injector. This amazing software program allows you to take a Wii or GameCube game and convert it to be playable on the Wii U home screen. All of these astounding features can only be used if your Wii U is hacked with Tiramisu or Aroma Custom Firmware. If you don't have a Wii U that is hacked, visit PenzePC.com slash guides to see every hacking video organized along with additional information to get your Wii U ready for this tutorial and unlock a plethora of other features. Visit PenzePC.com to find all your Wii or Wii U needs. Purchase a fully set up Wii or Wii U ready to take advantage of the highly detailed Pence PC tutorials or send in your console to be set up the same. Each console or service comes with a digital instruction sheet to answer any question you may have, which is always being updated, and you will see these updates anytime you access the link. Now that we have that out of the way, what exactly do you need to follow this guide? Well, as I mentioned before, a hacked Wii U. You'll also want a storage method for storing games. If you don't want to use a storage device, you can store the games on your Wii U's internal memory, or also called NAND. There are two Wii U models. One has 32 gigabytes and the other 8 gigabytes of internal storage. That isn't a ton of space, but works if you don't want a large collection of games. And lastly, you'll need an SD card, which you already have anyway if your Wii U is hacked. So now that we have the supplies out of the way, let's do a quick overview of the different methods. There is a timeline in the video description. Once you decide on the method you want to use, go to that section. There are four main ways of getting Wii U games on your hacked Wii U console. Copying a game disc is simple enough using a homebrew app. It copies the game to your SD card, and then you can install from your SD card to your NAND or storage method. The second way is using the homebrew app Nusply, which is basically a homebrew replacement for the Nintendo eShop. Download games direct and install all with one button press. The PC app Wii U USB Helper is the third way and is much like Nusply, but just requires a few more steps. You can download the games direct to your PC, then transfer to your Wii U SD card to install to your Wii U. Lastly, Tikan Moon's Wii VC Injector will allow you to inject code into Wii, GameCube, and other games to play direct from your Wii U menu, and in some cases, use the Wii U gamepad as a controller. Now that you know the methods for installing games, let's get your SD card ready by transferring the files needed for this tutorial. Go ahead and plug your Wii U SD card into your PC. You'll need an SD to USB card adapter if you do not have an SD card slot in your PC. So here I am on my desktop. I have my Wii U SD card right here. Go ahead and download the Pence PC Wii U side games tutorial. It'll come in a zipped archive like so you'll need a program like WinRAR or 7-Zip to unzip this. Once the archive is opened, you'll see a folder like this, Pin PC Wii U side games tutorial. Go ahead and go into that folder there, and then go ahead and copy all of the folders that are in this archive and transfer to the root of your SD card. Root means not inside any folders, so I'm just putting it on the root of my Wii U SD card. It may ask you to replace some files. If it does, go ahead and replace the files in the destination. This should place all the files exactly where they need to go. Once you have the files transferred to your SD card, go ahead and put your SD card back into your Wii U. Now that you have the files ready, let's get your storage device ready to install games. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the storage methods for the Wii U games on the Wii U side. Now, if you watch my USB loader tutorial, you'll remember that you have to have two separate storage methods, one for the VWi USB loader and one for the Wii U side. So for this, we're talking strictly Wii U side storage. You can literally use just about any storage method possible. The max storage device you can have is two terabytes. You can use one larger than two terabytes, but the Wii U will only use two terabytes of the space, leaving the rest of the space unusable. So it really doesn't make much sense purchasing a device larger than two terabytes. So for the most basic ones, we've got just a standard external hard drive. If you use one of these USB powered hard drives, you're going to have to use a dual USB power cable. So what this is going to do, because the Wii U doesn't provide enough power in the USB ports, you have to use two USB ports to power this thing. So both of these are going to go into the back of the Wii U to allow this to work. 
whenever you plug in a storage device to the Wii U, it's going to ask you to format it. The Wii U is going to format your storage device to a proprietary format, so only that Wii U can use the storage device. So you can't format this hard drive and put it on another Wii U. It has to stay with this Wii U. You also can use a wall-powered USB hard drive, so you're going to power this through the wall outlet, a 12 volt, and then the USB cable would go into the Wii U. Flash drives can also be used, doesn't matter the size. SD cards in a USB adapter can be used too to store games. I don't recommend this as there's better options, but if you wanted to, it does work. Now for one of the best options is the solid state drive. It uses very little power, so you don't need a dual USB cable. And you would just use one of these cables here, an SSD to 3.0 adapter. You simply plug it in like so and then plug in the USB cable into your Wii U. It works great, it draws very little power, and it's probably the best speed that you can get, although you're really not gonna see any performance by using one of these just because you're limited to the USB on the Wii U, which is very slow. And for the final option, which is a good option too, is M.2 in a USB enclosure. Now you have to be careful, there are two different types of M.2 drives. If you don't know what it is, it's a little stick that looks like this if you haven't been around you know, PCs a whole lot. That's basically all it is, just this little stick here. It will go in this enclosure, slide right in, press it down, and then put the cover on. You would then plug the USB cable into here, and then the other end into the Wii U. There are two differences between the M.2 drives. There's a SATA version and there's an NVMe version. The NVMe is way faster, but once again, you're not going to be able to take advantage of that speed. And second off, the NVMe one takes way more power. So the NVMe one's not going to be able to be used with just a single USB port. You're going to have to use a USB hub if you want this one to work. So I suggest definitely getting just the SATA M.2, okay? It's actually going to be specific on the description. Whenever you buy it, it'll say SATA M.2. The same thing with the enclosures. This is an NVMe enclosure, and this is a SATA M.2 enclosure. So if you get a SATA M.2, you're going to have to get a SATA M.2 enclosure. If you get an NVMe M.2, you're going to get an NVMe enclosure. So like I said, if you want to use this NVMe one, you're going to have to use a USB hub like here. I would just plug this into the hub which is powered by a wall outlet, and then plug the data cable from this hub into the Wii U, and then it will work. Definitely a lot more work using the NVMe one, so I really suggest just doing the SATA M.2 and the SATA M.2 enclosure. Not only that, the NVMe ones are gonna be a lot more expensive also. Go ahead and have your storage device connected to your Wii U. If you have not formatted your storage device, it will ask you whenever you boot your Wii U up to format it, so go ahead and do that. Now remember, as I explained in my previous tutorial for USB Loader GX, you have to have two separate storage devices, one for the Wii U side, one for the VWi or USB Loader side. So this tutorial is focusing on the Wii U side. So let's go ahead and get our Wii U storage device set up. Whenever you have your storage device connected to the Wii U, it will automatically boot up and say, this needs to be formatted. If it does not ask you to format, you can go ahead and go into system settings. In the system settings, the second option right here is copy, move, delete data and format USB storage. So that's what we wanna do is to format the USB storage. Go ahead and select format USB storage device this will format the USB storage device so that it can be used with this console. Next, next, and just remember, it will delete everything off of this hard drive. So if you have anything that you need to keep, make sure you put that on your PC or back it up and then format the drive because this will delete everything. It will format it to a Wii U proprietary format so that you cannot access this hard drive on your PC or any other device. It will be made specifically for this Wii U but if you ever need to, you can still use it on your PC, but you'll just lose all of your Wii U data. Format this USB storage device, next. And then the last, press the red format button. So it is complete. So our SD card is now ready, and my hard drive is now ready. Time to show the methods of installing games. First up, is copying a game disc direct to your Wii U or Wii U hard drive. 
To copy this game disk, we're going to use a homebrew app called WUD. It's going to copy all of the files direct to my SD card, and then I will install the files from my SD card to my hard drive. Go ahead and place your disk in your Wii U. Depending on what firmware you are using, either Tiramisu at the moment or Aroma, if you're going to use Tiramisu, go ahead and go into the Homebrew Launcher. And then run the WUD.RPX file. And remember, if you're using Aroma, so you can switch between Tiramisu and Aroma, all you have to do is hold the X button and then press the power button on boot up to launch into either Tiramisu or Aroma, depending on what you want to use. So here it's given me the option. I'm going to go ahead and choose Aroma. And now that I'm on Aroma, you can see that the program is on the Wii U home menu where it says Wii U disk dumper. So if you're on Aroma, you would just choose this instead of going into the homebrew launcher. So let's go ahead and run this. And once again, thank you for Mass Gel for all of your work on this. He created this app, he created Tiramisu, he created Aroma. So big thanks to him. We're going to go ahead and go down to dump partition as dot app. This is going to create only the files that we need from the disk to allow us to install to our either our Wii U internal memory or an external hard drive. The dump target, you want to make sure it says SD. So whenever you have dump partition as dot app, go ahead and press A on that. Sometimes you might get two different things here. Always choose the one that says game and the one that shows a large gigabyte partition. So this one's 6.07. Sometimes you might get another one that says 0.0. .0. Always choose the one that actually has the game. So this is selected. I'm gonna go ahead and press A and it will now dump the disc to our SD card. Once the disc dump is done, go ahead and press the A button to return. You can go ahead and go down to exit after your disk has been dumped to your SD card, go ahead and place your SD card back into your PC. So here is my SD card. Whenever you dump your Wii U disk, it will automatically create this folder on your SD card, WU Dump. So go into that folder there, then it will create another one right here, then go into that one, and then you'll see this folder. If we go into this folder, we'll see all of these different files. It broke up the disk into a bunch of different files. So. Go ahead and back out and this one right here we can go ahead and rename yours might be different like yours will probably have different letters and numbers but um, as long as you go into the folder and you see all of these you can go ahead and back out and rename this folder to the game name or name it whatever you want so what i'm going to do is grab this monster hunter folder and put it in the root of my sd card so i'm going to drag and drop it up here it says move to 128 gigabyte sd that's my root of my SD card. I'll drop it there. Now I'll go back into the root of my SD card, find that Monster Hunter folder, and put this in my install folder. So drag and drop into the install folder. If you do not have an install folder, just go ahead and right click, new, and then create a new folder called install. So if we go to my install folder, I now have my Monster Hunter folder with all of the files in it. So now I can put my SD card back in my Wii U and install Munter. Ugh. So now I can put my SD card back into my Wii U and install Monster Hunter to my hard drive. So go ahead and go into your homebrew launcher. If you don't have a homebrew launcher icon on your Wii U menu, you can always use the Me Maker app, which will boot you into homebrew launcher. Once in homebrew launcher, go ahead and launch WUP installer. Anytime you launch WUP installer, it's going to read everything in your install folder on your SD card. So as you remember, we placed Monster Hunter that we copied from the disk into our install folder. We can see it right there. I'm going to select it and then press the install button. Are you sure you want to install? Yes. Where do you want to install? So if I choose NAND, that's going to install to my internal memory, which is totally fine. But since I have a hard drive connected, I want to install to USB, so I'm going to select that one. All right, so Monster Hunter was successfully installed. Press OK. And then press the home button to exit out. Let's go back to our main Wii U menu. 
So we can see it right here on the main Wii U menu that is on our hard drive. And you can see this icon here, which is the disk drive. So let's go ahead and run it from our hard drive. If it asks you to update or starts updating automatically, that is perfectly fine. No issues with that at all. And that is how you copy game disks to your storage device. The next method is using the homebrew app Nusply, which is basically like the Nintendo eShop. If you're using Aroma, Nusply is going to automatically load on your Wii U home menu, and you can select it right here. If you're using Tiramisu, you need to do this one step. So I booted into Tiramisu. As you can see, Nusply is nowhere on the Wii U home menu. So what I'll have to do is install it to the Wii U home menu. With Aroma, homebrew apps are automatically put on the Wii U menu whenever Aroma is loaded up. So since we're on Tiramisu, that, that's not the case and everything has to go into the homebrew launcher. So go ahead and launch the homebrew launcher. Once again, if you have a forwarder for homebrew launcher on your Wii U menu, use that. If you don't, you'll most likely have to use the Mii Maker. So launch that. Once in Homebrew Launcher and using Tiramisu, go ahead and launch WUP Installer. Go ahead and find Nusply. Select it and press Install. Are you sure you want to install? Yes. Go ahead and install it to your NAND. That way, it'll always be on your Wii U. Once installed, go ahead and press the Home button. and the home button again. Close out. Now Nusply is on our Wii U home menu. Make sure you're connected to the internet and launch Nusply. So let's go ahead and go to download content. Here we can find all of the different games that are available. Using the shoulder buttons we can go down to updates, DLC, demos, and all. You can press down on the D-pad to go one by one, or you can press left and right on the D-pad to go up and down super fast. And then obviously the flags next to the games means the region that those games are in. So right here is the US flag. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose Shovel Knight. So the first option shows where we want to install it to. I've got my hard drive connected for my storage method, so I want to install to USB. You can also choose to install to your NAND, which is your internal memory if you wanted to. If for some reason you only wanted to just download the files to back them up on your PC, you could choose that, download only, and then you can choose where to download to. So you could choose to download to your SD, to your NAND, or your USB. But what I want to do is install to my USB hard drive. So I've got my operation install, install to my USB, and then download to SD. So it's going to download the files to my SD card, and then automatically install to my USB. Now this says keep downloaded files. I'm gonna say no, I don't wanna keep the install files. It'll just take up space. I just wanna download and then install and get rid of those install files. So now that I'm ready, I'm going to go ahead and press the start button. A great feature whenever you go to install a game, it'll actually tell you that there's updates too. Do you wanna install those updates also? Of course you do. You'll most likely wanna install the update also. Let's go ahead and install the update too. Right now it's going 1.5 megabytes per second. If you get an error like this and it constantly does this, you can take your SD card and put it in your PC and, and delete the folder and then try again. A way to avoid this type of stuff is to use one of these devices. It's a USB to Ethernet adapter. It plugs into your Wii U USB port and allows a direct connection, which can actually double your download speeds and prevent errors like this. So here I am on my desktop on my Wii U SD card. I go to my install folder and here we can see Shovel Knight was downloading. It was supposed to delete these files after it was done, but it ran into some error. So what I'll do is go ahead and delete this. And that way I can try again. This time I'm going to try with a wired connection. So now Shovel Knight is gone from the install folder. Let's try again. So I have my ethernet cable plugged into the adapter and the USB port in the front. It can be in the back too, but I've got both USB cables plugged in the back. So the front ones are the only ones open. I'm going to go to internet and connect to internet and then go to connection types. 
wired connection. All right, we've got a wired connection. Let's go ahead and give this a shot again. Right now we are downloading at 3.66 megabytes per second, which is more than double the Wi-Fi connection using this wired connection. You can see it's, it's hitting up to eight megabytes a second. All right, it was installed successfully. No errors, no network issues at all. I'm gonna go ahead and press the A button. Now remember, if you don't do the update and DLC all in one go, what you wanna do is always install the game first, then install the update, and then install the DLC. So exiting out of Nusply, going to our main Wii U menu, we can see Shovel Knight was installed to our menu. Super easy process. So I just showed you how to install Nusply and install games directly to your Wii U. Now I'll show you a program on your PC that is basically like Nusply with just a few extra steps. The positive to using this app, which is called Wii U USB Helper, is that the download speeds are a lot faster than on Nusply. Go ahead and download Wii U USB Helper on your PC and install. Welcome to the USB Helper Launcher setup. Let's go next, and I agree. You probably want to choose the latest version, so I'm going to choose the latest version. And next, go ahead and install it anywhere you want, but I'm just going to go ahead and choose the default. And finish. For a firewall alert, I just went ahead and allowed private networks, and then allow access. So select the region of your console. I am in USA, so I'll select that. Go ahead and make sure you agree to these terms. And hit OK. Next, you want to choose the location where your games are going to be installed to. For me, I made a folder on my desktop called Wii U Games. You can save it wherever you want. You can name it whatever you want. It is totally up to you. So I selected my Wii U Games folder and select folder. The next, ticket. In order to work, this application needs to download tickets. Unfortunately, since this is copyrighted material, you will need to provide them yourself. There is a link in the video description to copy and paste right here, the title keys link. Once you do that, go ahead and press OK. When it loads up, you'll be greeted with this user interface and some awful music. To turn the music off, just click this icon here since we are on a Wii U, we can go ahead and go to the filter and have it filter only Wii U games. I don't want 3DS and I don't want Wii, which doesn't matter because there's really no Wii games on here anyway. Once you've filtered Wii U, you can go ahead and go back to your library. We can see that there are 1,133 Wii U games. So we can make this bigger to have the viewing screen bigger for all of the game. Go ahead and drag this down to make this window bigger. You can go ahead and browse through this if you want to, or you can use this search bar right here where it says games. Since I downloaded Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate on Nusply, let's go ahead and give it a shot on Wii U USB Helper. So I come up to the search bar here where it says games. I'll just search monster. And we have two options here, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate and Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. One says USA, one says all. Now. I believe all means all regions, USA means obviously USA. So I'm assuming if I download all, it'll work on USA. So let's give that a shot. To download, all you have to do is right click on it and then download game. It's gonna download directly to whatever folder you set as your default to download to. So I'll click on download game. Just like Nusbleed, it asks you, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate uh, has an update that you do not have downloaded. Would you like to add it to the queue? Of course, so let's go ahead and hit yes. So down here, we've got my queue of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate and the update. Once you are ready, just hit this button right here where it says start downloading. So as I talked about the advantage of using this over Nusply are the download speeds. As we see right here, it is varying from 20 megabytes all the way up to 40 megabytes. So that's about 15 times faster than Nusply. So now that it is finished completing, I can go ahead and look in the folder where it downloaded to. You're gonna see a data folder, go into that, go into the all folder, and then you'll have your games and your updates. The games is where the actual base game is located, and then the updates folder is where the update folder is. 
So what you'd want to do is go ahead and install the game first and then install the update. How you know the difference between the two? If you come into the base game, you'll see a bunch of different numbers afterwards. If you look at the update, you're gonna see a little B with some numbers. So you'll know that this is the update. On our Wii U SD card, we go into the install folder. Go into the install folder, and this is where you will place the games. So the first one, we go into the games, and drag and drop Monster Hunter. So now we have the base game in our install folder. Go ahead and go back to your updates. Here is the update folder for Monster Hunter. Now, just so I'm not confused whenever I get on my Wii U, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this. I went ahead and renamed it Monster Hunter Update. Now I can go ahead and transfer it to my install folder on my SD card. Now, instead of doing what I just did, you can also use this option here where it says copy to SD. You would just select that then select the game that you want and then copy to SD. Select the SD card. And as you can see, it sends it directly to the install folder. So now that I have my games on my SD card and my install folder, I'm gonna go ahead and plug my SD card back in my Wii U. Okay, once booted into your Wii U home menu, go ahead and launch the homebrew launcher. If you don't have an icon on your home screen, go ahead and launch the Mii Maker, which will boot you into Homebrew Launcher. Go ahead and launch WUP Installer. As I said, you always want to install the base game first, then install the update, and if there is DLC that you downloaded, then install the DLC. So as you can see here, we've got the base game, so I'm going to choose that, install. Do you want to install? Yes and I'm going to install it to my USB hard drive, so I'll choose USB. So the base game finished installing. Let's go ahead and do the update. It says Monster Hunter update because we renamed the folder earlier. Go ahead and hit install. Do you want to install? Yes. And I will install it to my USB hard drive. And it is complete. Once again, if you had DLC for the game, now would be the time to install the DLC after you install the update, but there is no DLC for the Monster Hunter, so I'll just go ahead and press the home button. And then the home button once again to close out of Homebrew Launcher. Once we get back to the Wii U menu, you will see Monster Hunter 3 has been installed to the Wii U home menu. And it is right here. Pretty easy process. Now it's time for the final option to play games on your Wii U system using Tikkun Moon's Wii VC Injector. What this is going to do is take a Wii or a GameCube game, inject it with some software, and allow you to play it on your Wii U home menu. As I mentioned, this was originally created by Tikkun Moon in the GBA Temps forums. He has since given the realms over to other modders and they have improved on it. Now there are two different versions that I've come across. The main one that he talks about, which is right here. I tested this one and came up with errors. And there's another one called Tikan Moon's Wii VC Injector Mod. This is the one that worked perfect for me, so you can you know, try the other one if you want. I suggest using this one, as that is what worked for me. So go ahead and download it in the video description. So here I am on my desktop. I've got both versions. This is the one that worked for me. This is the mod version. You can try this one, it may be work for you, but no matter what, you have to have Microsoft.NET Framework installed. I'm pretty sure if you launch it and you don't have it, it'll ask you to install it. If not, you can do it manually by going to the video description and downloading in the link. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the Tikan Moon's Wii VC Injector mod. So I've got Tikan Moon's Wii VC Injector. So the very first thing that you want to do whenever you load it up is go ahead and go to the build title option right here. There are two different keys that you need to put, the Wii U Common Key and the Rhythm Heaven Fever Key. Both of these keys are in the video description, so you would just copy, paste, then save the key, copy, paste, save this key. Once you have them saved, it should look green like this. If it's red, then you did something wrong, and you need to make sure that you have the right key in the right spot. Second, the output directory. This is where the game is going to go after it's done being converted. This is the mod version, which has this option here and this option here. On the original Wii VC injector, it doesn't give you these options. So I am ready. I'm going to go ahead and choose the Wii Retail Injection. I've got this marked. I will choose my game. Now you can use .iso or .wbfs for Wii games, which is awesome. So I want to go ahead and do Super Mario Galaxy. I'll select the WBFS file. 
open it. Now I want to go ahead and get the artwork for the game, so I'll come down here, select this. It'll automatically place the artwork. Going to optional source files, there's nothing in here that you need. This option here, second GC disc, is just for the second disc on a GameCube. Gamepad slash meta options, this is very important. Wii games that allowed the classic controller to be used can be emulated for the Wii U gamepad. So if there was a game that allowed you to use this, you can use your gamepad to play the game. So there is a list, list of Wii games compatible with the classic controller. All of these games here are compatible. As you can see, Super Mario Galaxy is not one of them. Because it's not one of them, I'm going to select no gamepad emulation, Wii remotes only. So I will have to use a Wii remote and nunchuck to be able to play this game. It'll show on the gamepad and it will show on your TV too. Now, like I said, if it was one of the games that had the classic controller allowed, you would select this one, Force Classic Controller Connected. There is also another compatibility list, which is excellent. This one has a lot more info too. An example, Kirby's Epic Yarn. Right here it says, on the gamepad, it works. The status, the game works itself. The game does not support classic controller. However, the game uses sideways remote. Inject the game using horizontal Wii remote. So what it's saying is Kirby's Epic Yarn allowed you to use the Wii remote horizontally. Looking in Tikon Moons, we can see right here this option, horizontal Wii remote emulation. So if I was using Kirby's Epic Yarn, I would go ahead and select horizontal Wii remote emulation. And this would allow me to use the Wii U gamepad. So once again, if a Wii game allowed you to use a classic controller, go ahead and do the force classic controller so you can use your gamepad. If the game allowed you to use horizontal Wii remote controls in the game, go ahead and select horizontal Wii remote emulation. If it didn't have any of those options, go ahead and select no gamepad emulation Wii remote only. Once again, you can always come to this list, look at the specific game, and you'll see notes on it, whether there's any workarounds or any better options. So I've got Super Mario Galaxy, no gamepad emulation, Wii remotes only. I'm gonna have to use a Wii remote. Coming to advanced, there's nothing really here that you need to look at, and then we'll go to build title, and we can go ahead and hit the build button. Depending on what version of Tika Moon's Wii VC injector you're using, it may ask you where you want to save the game. This one right here, I already have an output directory, so it's going to send it to the place that I already put in here, which is right on my desktop. All right, so it was completed. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the folder that it was sent to, and it has been made into files that can be installed on the Wii U. I'll go ahead and show you the GameCube method. So if you're wanting to do a GameCube game, just make sure that this is selected right here, GC Retail Injection. Go ahead and find your game. I'm going to go ahead and use Resident Evil as an example because it has two discs. So for the first, I will go ahead and choose my game.iso. Come down here and click the box art. Now for the optional source files, this tab here, I will choose the second disc. Once again, if you only have a single disc for the GameCube, you don't need to worry about this, but this is just in case there's two discs for the GameCube. So I will now select disc2.iso. You don't need to worry about anything in the gamepad meta options because it's not a Wii game. There's nothing really in the advanced option either, but this part is pretty imperative. Go ahead and put your Wii U SD card into your computer and then select the Nintendo SD card menu. Make sure your SD card is selected in the Nintendo SD card menu. You can go ahead and download the latest Nintendo, which is the program on your Wii U that allows you to play the GameCube games and it will give you the most up-to-date file for that. Now here, we wanna go ahead and create a mem card emulation. What this is gonna do is create a memory card for these GameCube games so that you are able to save. So that is selected there. If you wanted your games in widescreen instead of the four by three aspect ratio, you can go ahead and hit the force widescreen. And coming down here to the mem card blocks, we can go ahead and choose the highest one, which is 251. These are just the amount of blocks that were on a memory card back in the day. We'll just choose 251. Now that I've got the options that I want, I can go ahead and generate Nintendo config file. So I'll save that. And it made the generation complete on my SD card. So now going forward, any GameCube game that we inject and are played on our Wii U, we will be able to save perfectly fine. You can close out of this now and we can go ahead and build the game. All right, so it completed the Resident Evil conversion. I have my Wii U SD card in my PC. I'm gonna go ahead and go into my install folder on my SD card. This is where we're gonna place all of the different game files so that we can install it to our Wii U. 
First up, we went ahead and did the Super Mario Galaxy, so I'll transfer that one to my install folder. And I will now transfer Resident Evil. So now the games are transferred to my install folder on my SD card, and I'm going to go ahead and place my SD card back into my Wii U. Once on your Wii U, go ahead and launch the Homebrew Launcher, and once again, if you don't have a shortcut, go ahead and launch the Mii Maker. Load up WUP Installer. Here we can see the two games that we injected. I will go ahead and select both, and then install. Are you sure you want to install? Yes. And then here you can install to your internal memory, your NAND, or you can install to USB, which is currently my solid state drive. So I'll go ahead and select that one. Okay, the games were successfully installed. Go ahead and press the home button and close out of WUP installer. Go ahead and press the home button again and then close out of the software. And we can now see the two games that we installed. We got Super Mario Galaxy there and Resident Evil right here. Like I mentioned before, Super Mario Galaxy does not allow the classic controller, so I have to use a Wiimote. I will go ahead and connect the Wiimote now and go ahead and give it a shot. So as you can see, I've got Super Mario Galaxy working. To exit out of the game, you just press the home button on the Wiimote. And we'll give Resident Evil a shot. The amazing thing about the GameCube games that are injected, you can use your Wii U gamepad to play them flawlessly. Every single GameCube game that I've played has worked excellent with the gamepad. You would just choose the yes if you wanted to use the gamepad. And as you can see, I can control the game using the Wii U gamepad. So right now this GameCube game is in that 4-3 aspect ratio. You can see the bars on the sides. The cool thing about this is I can actually go ahead and exit out of this game by pressing the home button on the gamepad. I can actually change GameCube settings on the fly. So I can take out my SD card while my Wii U is even on if I wanted to. Go ahead and place your SD card in your PC. Launch Tika Moon's Wii VC injector and then go ahead and go to your Nintendo SD card menu. Make sure Mem Card Emulation is selected and also Force Widescreen. Place it back in your Wii U and launch the game. So as you can see, now that that simple config file update, forcing the Wii U to widescreen gives me a full widescreen on the gamepad. Some people like it, some people don't. I prefer it. Maybe you don't because it looks a little stretched. Totally up to you, totally personal preference. Just press the home button to exit out of a GameCube game and it'll bring you back to the Wii U menu. All right, now time to talk about all the different controllers that you can use on your Wii U system to play these games. If you place the files or you followed my previous guides, hacking your Wii U, you're gonna have this program, this homebrew program called Blue Pair. It's going to allow you to add different controllers like PlayStation controllers, Xbox controllers. Here are all of the supported controllers. Obviously, you can use a Wii U Pro Controller 2 to play these games. You can even use GameCube controllers in the Wii VC GameCube injected games also. So if you want to take a look at all the supported controllers, go ahead and look in the video description. The link is there. Blue Pair is already installed on your Wii U if you followed my guide or if you placed the files on your SD card earlier in the video. To connect, you would just connect like you would a Wii U Pro Controller. So I'm going to hit the sync button on the front of my Wii U. So with my PlayStation 4 controller, I'm going to go ahead and hold the share button and then hold the PlayStation button here. And it'll flash like so. And it's connected now. Low battery, of course. And I've got the PlayStation 5 controller connected just like I did with the DualShock 4. You can see that it's moving the tiles. So any controller paired with Blue Pair will work perfectly fine in Wii U games. As you can see, I've got this PlayStation 5 controller. Same thing with the PlayStation 4, some Xbox controllers, Joy-Cons. You know, they all work perfectly fine in Wii U games. But the Wii U Pro Controller is the best one because it will work in GameCube games, Wii U games, uh, sometimes Wii games. Blue Pair does not work in Wii or GameCube injected uh, games because it has to go to the virtual Wii side. It's just not compatible on that side. It only works on the Wii U side. If for some reason you're having screw ups with your controllers or you've got too many connected and you want to get rid of them, go ahead and go to your settings. Then choose this option here, Wii Remote and Sensor Bar. And then choose the option Delete All Wii Remote Pairings. So now you can start fresh. So this is probably my favorite controller to use just because of how easy it is to use and everything from GameCube games to Wii U games. 
and it's wireless, feels good, the Wii U Pro Controller. Syncing it, press the sync button in the front, sync button on the back of the controller, and it syncs up super easy. Here I have my Wii U Pro Controller connected. I am currently playing Metroid Prime, which was a Wii VC injected game using Tikon Moon's injector. As you can see, it works perfectly fine. The issue is, whenever you go to launch a GameCube game and it asks you to use the gamepad, if you want to use a controller, hit no. If you select yes that you want to use a gamepad, it'll make this controller number two and the gamepad controller number one. So in a single player game like this, you're not going to be able to use the controller because it's acting as uh, controller number two. So if you want to use a controller, select no on gamepad. Unlike the controllers that were connected with Blue Pair, the Wii U Pro Controller still works. You have to be careful with these. Make sure it is an OEM or Nintendo brand Wii U Pro Controller. Not every third party controller works. I do have a list of compatible controllers that has not been filled out yet. So if you come across a third party Wii U Pro Controller that works for these games, go ahead and let me know in the comments and I'll add it to the list. Another option is using the GameCube adapter. It has two USB cords that plug directly into the front USB ports and then the GameCube controller in the port. And as you can see, the GameCube controller works perfect with that adapter. A few other great options for Wii and GameCube games using Tikon Moon's Wii VC injector is using a classic controller here on my left and the GameCube controller that plugs into the Wiimote on my right. Both of these can plug right into a Wiimote like so. And when you choose a game, just hit no when it asks do you want to use a gamepad. And as you can see, it works great. I can even switch the controllers mid-game. Mission complete! Did you enjoy this guide? Visit PenzePC.com slash guides to view many more tutorials for Wii, Wii U, and more, all organized in order to take advantage of many homebrew apps and bring your console into the new year. Consider subscribing to the channel today to help us continue making these guides. Thanks again.